Good morning. I hope you guys are having a great morning. Uh, it's uh, November 1st, 2019, and uh, I'm going to take a look at the markets. It's uh, also Friday, so it's the non form perils day, and we're going to talk a bit about that as well. We're going to talk about some of the Chinese numbers. Uh, you see, overnight, Chinese Caxing PMI um, had a significant little boost. And uh, effectively, it's back at levels uh, suggesting that we're having a very good, strong con uh, economy in China. Um, that's the private one, and I'll show you the image of that uh, in a second here. Uh, it's actually very good. <laughs> so it's surprisingly good, to be honest. Uh, it's especially good because the official one, which people um tend to focus on or tend to say it could be manipulated is actually not as strong at all so these are the numbers and you see we're pretty much up here so pretty much as we were at the highs of 27 well, 2018 and uh, highs of uh, what seems to be 2014 2015 so according to this indicator the chinese economy is doing really well on a relative basis this is for the manufacturing sector now the official one is actually still lingering around the lows so it's a bit of confusion here. On the other hand, you have the GDP numbers, and we know that they are been bad, and you have industrial production, which is what we call hard data, which also has been uh, bad. So I don't think really we should be buying this, but obviously the market sees this and it goes up. Uh, China A50, I think was up with about 2% or so, and uh, very close to breaking out, much as the uh, rest of the markets. Uh, I mean, much like the S&P 500, for example, which you know had a breakout already. When we traded above this high as you can see went up down up and down and and you know stabilizing up here now uh and obviously got that little boost yesterday we went down to the buy zone and uh this would have been a good opportunity to buy a bit now it's known for perils day which just makes it a really volatile day realistically here it could be up it can be down no one really knows so if you did buy here it's nothing wrong buying uh booking some profits over here okay uh, and if we do revisit the lows here then i think people are going to buy again as for the china a50 uh let's see if i can load that so this is the china a50 so you can see it jumped nicely from support and it's now potentially about to trigger this massive ascending triangle uh, and this is uh, 50 stocks i trading on the mainland exchange and it's looking rather bullish as you can see here so all of these markets are starting to go much much higher as the indicator uh, seems to be barring them out in china and then in the us we have a similar leading indicator today the ism uh, number and that number um is anticipated to be the it's anticipated to be 48.9 so that's a higher outcome than the prior reading so last time it looked like this let me show you that um went all the way down here now so obviously if the number weakens further which some economists are saying then we're gonna go further into some sort of a uh, this is definitely a contraction in the labor market as uh, in the manufacturing sector in the us but this is gonna be even more bearish and that could easily send stock markets much much lower but this is economic data and stock markets tend to move ahead of economic data. So if anything, the way stock markets are now, is they're telling us we're gonna do something like that. Sometimes though, the market sort of realizes, oh, look, you know, we the, the market's up with 20% or something like that from the December low. And then they say at the same time, well, look, like the indicators have now moved upwards. So um, that can happen sometimes. People start to realize maybe we're wrong. And then you have a big, reaction uh, because as i said before uh when when people buy a company some uh then they're buying it because what they think is going to happen in the future so i'm going to do a little detour today so the current pe value of uh, uh the s p 500 is at 22. what does that mean and let me show a nice little chart i just found here uh, so you can see, let me see here. So you can see up here um, how that is at this level here. I didn't verify this data, but seems to be a reasonable site. 
So this means that it takes, if this is with the whole S&P. So companies of the S&P, they need to make, at current levels, they need to make 22 years of profit to buy back the whole, uh, to, to, to buy back the value of the stock markets. So the, the stock market is trading uh, the prices of the S&P 500 companies today, they have in their valuation is 22 years of profits. And that means that the market is effectively pricing in 22 years ahead. Does that make sense? So why would people buy that like now? So some people will use this to get an indication when stock markets are a bit overvalued, as you can see here, um, you know, in the eighties when the market bottomed out, PE values were very, very low. And in the fifties as well, and then here, uh, this seems to be just ahead of the, uh, the well, the Great Depression was here, right? So, so, but but people will still buy something. I think Netflix has a Netflix, so Netflix has a PE of a hundred and something. And let me see if I can find it. I eighty nine. Why is it at eighty nine? Because people think that Netflix is kind of its income is gonna like. It's gonna do maybe triple or something like that, at least double. Is if it doubles, then and the company share price remains the same, then your PE is suddenly halved, and it's because they have very high expectations about its future growth. So what happens here sometimes is that well, what's happening now really? The stock markets move way ahead of the markets, and sometimes they realize, oh, hold on, maybe things are not that good, and then they sell, and that's why we have that volatility. And if you can harness that volatility then uh, you can make money trading. So again, the stock market, you know, remains bullish for now. It moved up higher. As for the numbers this afternoon, they're gonna be influenced by GM, General Motors. They had a uh, strike. A lot of their workers are gonna be registered as unemployed, but GM and the unions have already agreed to a deal. So you won't have a situation now where you can, uh, well, where those, people that lost jobs today are going to go back being employed next month. So it's going to distort the NFPs as well. So general idea, I think maybe down here makes a lot of sense. Uh, some warning signs though, where it makes sense not to buy would be if the unemployment rate would decline or well, raise uh, increase uh, strongly. So it's anticipated to go up to 3.6% and the NFP headline figure and the unemployment rate figures are from different parts okay they're from different different surveys um and it's only if we start to go up so say four percent or something like that uh so above this little gray line i think that there will be a big worrying sign right now the way the law, labor market looks like it looks very stable as for the german dax because we're talking stocks yesterday we said you can buy here and let it go up it did so up here you can either opt to book 100 percent profit so book off if we revisit the lows i think people are gonna buy Less than open periods are terrible. As for gold prices, the markets are pretty much trading sideways. The dollar is under a bit of pressure. Um, and if we take out 15, 18.67, probably gonna go up a bit and then down a bit and then probably up again. These targets are, de are derived as a difference between support and resistance, that rectangle. Uh, Brent crude oil prices or US crude oil prices um dipped so this is the original buy spot between 54.86 and this low down here more or less um i think we can easily go back up to the entry level and this is a situation where i th i personally think this market declined a little bit more than what i would like to have have seen uh, and i think if i would have bought on the initial thing which i didn't do because i could see the market actually declining then but so i didn't buy it because i saw it it's going strongly lower so i said i'm not it doesn't make sense to buy here uh so when i saw that obviously I just let it decline but if i did buy up here which i did not then i would look to get out here if possible because i think we can go out and then maybe opt for a better entry at lower levels this little low level is uh 83.80 uh your usd so the market said yesterday, unfortunately, did not go low enough to hit that buy spot. So if it goes down again, I think it can make sense to potentially buy. But you look at, at the 11.23 and 110.70. If no comparisons are really good and the whole thing just comes down crashing, obviously the first thing you do is not buy. You need to wait for some stabilization. 
And there is some data. There's the CACSIN, not the CACSIN, the US ADP employment change. Now the ADP employment change was 125,000 jobs created last month. And what's quite good with the ADP number, as you know, that you guys have been following me for quite some time, is, is that the ADP number here is actually um, less volatile than the NFPs. The NFP can be 321 month. The next month is like 100. This one has less volatility and it does suggest that the labor market did okay in the last month. Uh, GBP USD, the day was the buy here to ride us upwards. You know, it's been a very, very difficult and boring time. We reached that on the 24th. So you needed like one week and one day to reach target more or less. And you have a bit of a profit or of 100 pip. There's nothing wrong taking that profit, especially if you bought very close to the lows. Uh, dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, fortunately, it slid below support yesterday. Nothing to do about. Nothing we can do about that right now. If I look at this, I still think we're going to trade slightly higher. It could be at least the way stock markets are telling us that we're probably going to continue to head upwards. So we just need to bottom out here somewhere. And we're going to finish off with the U.S. 10-year government bond yield. This one an important uh, indicator for the dollar yen and for risk appetite in general and it's stabilizing here since August is pretty much stabilizing. We are, however, still in a downtrend here. Uh, we definitely are. So it does suggest to me that, I'm not saying we're gonna trade much lower because if you take a step back, you can see, yeah, the, these are actually the multi-year lows. So if, it's, if you trade below 131%, um, percent, then that would be beginning of a major slide in fact this would be i'm not sure it's like a triple top a triple bottom one two three and then you have like difference here so it does suggest a significant decline like yeah, the yield going down i'm gonna do 50 percent here because if i do a negative 1.67 then the yield is gonna go negative so that's not gonna make sense so negative 55 percent and that's 58 but if you look at this right now uh 58 basis points is actually stabilizing and obviously the, the, this market hasn't really isn't really trading as hawkish as stock markets are and they're definitely not trading as hawkish as as um well is it like the yen or well, actually yeah it's trying to bottom out like the yen realistically these country size for longer and then because of the big picture structure if the world economy suffers more which wouldn't be unlikely then we can have uh and i would say that because they will to china it's probably going to continue unless trump backs down um so maybe later at one point lower but right now it's above 131 and just keep an eye it's bullish share should send the dollar yen much higher uh and if it breaks lower then that would be weakening things and wrap things up sorry that we couldn't do this live guys have a great day and happy trading and be careful out there it's nfp day and i'll see you guys on monday don't forget to like this video and don't forget to share as well very important have a great day thank you